What happens when you put a group of junkies and recovering drug addicts into a vault? Well, vault Tech wanted to figure that out, and in Vault 95, they found out the answers. This is located just on the edge of the glowing sea, and when you find it, the gunners have already made it their home. So, you'll have to do a lot of fighting in order to get inside. Several assault trons and a squad of gunners stand between you and the elevator doors. But once you're inside, the fun is just beginning. Whilst a lot of vaults can be quite complicated, Vault 95 is divided into three easy sections. Firstly, we'll have to cross some tripwires, although disarming them does get you quite a lot of fiber optics and crystals. If you want to deactivate the turret, you can of course go through this sliding door, which will give you access to a terminal to take control of it, after which you can disarm the Tesla Arc, which will be activated if you decide to roll on through. There are several can chimes, which will alert all the gunners here to your presence. So this is the first and main section. At the bottom level here, we have an arc reactor. Then we've got this middle section and the overseer's office up top there. You will need to access it if you want to get into the medical wing over to the left here. If you want the bobblehead though, we will first go into the residential section. Be very careful of this tripwire as it will activate several grenades to drop down. If you try to do a run, you will most likely not make it. If you've disarmed it all, you can pick up all the grenades and you may need them going down into the residential zone. There are several rooms for you to have a look through and some of them have rather amusing scenes. If you choose to go through all of them, you'll be able to get yourself a bobblehead right inside this room. A gunner commander guards it, however, but once you're inside, you can pick yourself up here. Excellent. The big guns bobblehead, permanently gaining 25% critical damage with heavy weapons, so a brilliant place to visit. There's also a little terminal with a story as to how the breakdown of this place went. Firstly, we'll read it here. They said they were supposed to be helping us. The vault was supposed to be safe. A place where rehabilitation was nothing but inevitable. It may have been the end of the world for most, but for we, lost souls, it was a new beginning. I was grateful for the chance to start over. We all were. We had our struggles the last five years, but the time we spent here turned us into family. And any one of us would have been happy to play out the rest of our lives in here. And now this. So something clearly happened. Log 2. They knew what they were doing. They weren't trying to help us. I never thought I would see chems again. Why would I? But now, here we are. With a whole lifetime's worth of the stuff laid out in front of us like a freaking department store window display. And it was there the whole time. Some cracked right away. Grabbed what they could and ran off to get high. There was fighting. I hid. Nothing I could have done to help anyone. I'm still hearing gunshots. I'm not ready to give up what I had here. I thought I was over the stuff. I thought if I ever saw it again, it wouldn't have power over me. I was wrong. It's taking every ounce of my willpower to stay here locked in my room. I can't take it anymore. No reason to stay sober. It's just as messed up down here as it is up there. I need something to help me cope. I don't care about the program anymore. I don't care. I don't. I don't. I really don't. I'm going to go out and be with my friends. I hope somebody is left. Actually, the gunners, when they arrived, there was some vault residents still occupying this place, as per the survival guide. There's also a little novice door you can unlock, which gives us, once again, another little story here. It seems this person was very much into their psycho. Now, what happened was, as they were recovering, they uh, hid a stash, let's just say, to release after a couple of years. And you can, as you can see, anarchy just ensued when somebody, as we're about to discover, opened up this little vault full of all the drugs and alcohol that these addicts so desperately were trying to get themselves weaned off. There's also some bathrooms with several items you may want to have a look at. And, uh, well, you can also find some funny scenes in some of the toilets as well. This person, again, seemed very much into Psycho. On to the next terminal, which can be found in this room, another novice lock. 
Your orders are as follows. Ensure all residents do not stray from the Vault Tech Rehabilitation Program. It is paramount that it is followed for our research objectives. You will act as any other resident. Your backstory and identity should be committed to memory and will not be recounted here. You are to work with the overseer elect on any compliance issues while ensuring ignorance of your special objectives. After five calendar years, your objective will shift. You will open the hidden storage compartment you were shown during training, allowing the residents to discover the stash of cams within on their own. Once it's been discovered, you are to thoroughly document the response. Observation. He's only got one entry, but today marks the fifth year since Vault 95 and I moved into the vault. It'll be f my first entry. The rehabilitation program seems to have helped every subject in this vault deal with the symptoms of withdrawal and cope with a new life in the vault environment. That is to say, not all withdrawals were not a challenging process for some. Our hypothesis was correct though, when there is simply no other alternative, an individual can recover. Today I will sneak out while all are asleep and I will open the stash. Um, the isolation seems to have proved helpful when addictive stimuli are absent. Now to see if stimuli do or what it does to the social order we have created over the past couple of years. As you can see, there's no other entry, so no doubt he was discovered, and I would say he didn't last all that long. I wonder, was he also an addict? That is a possible question. Alright, in terms of loot, we'll go down to the gunner barracks here on the bottom level. Then, if we go out the back to the reactor level, you can fight your way through a few gunners. In terms of loot, the best thing you want to pick up here is inside this room. Which will, of course, give you access to a lot of supplies as well as a little stealth boy and a safe on the floor. Once you've got all that, you can make your way back round and you'll find the arc reactor room. Again, usually guarded by a robot and several gunners. You can see the residents had a bit of a party here under the, uh, well, the lights of a unstable reactor. Heading back on out will bring you to the gunner barracks. Now, let's head on up to the overseer's terminal to get us into the medical wing. The medical wing, of course, is required for the quest line with Kate, called Benign Intervention, where essentially you get her clean from her addiction, and it's one of the final quests, or the final quest, for her. You can also see that they were having some sort of meeting here before everything went to hell. Having a look at the terminal, you can see the manifest in which Vault 95's elected official runs daily meetings and uh, makes sure the rules of the rehabilitation program are followed. This is not a con considered a position of power, but rather a position of support and servitude. Infractions are to be dealt with using positive reinforcement and encouragement. Uh, the Vault family, or the Vault are family, and the position of overseer should not prevent the resident from continuing their own journey. Every year on October 30th, there is a, an election, and uh, yeah, someone is elected. During the meeting here, Jane Myers is the current overseer, and uh, as the meeting goes, the resident Michael has expressed his desire to reduce the amount of meetings. He believes chem dependence is no longer an issue. Resident Randall reminded the group that adherence to the program was a condition of living in the vault. Uh, Patricia wondered if Vault Tech even existed anymore. Randall reminded that we are all addicts. We may pick up on healthy habits without the program. And then you can express agreement with Randall's sentiments. If we unlock the facilities wing, of course, we can head back on out. And we can make our way into the mess hall here. There are several gunners guarding the entrance uh, to the staircase at the back. You can, of course, go inside. You can maybe find some food left over in the kitchen. Moving into the back, it turns into a more administrative building. And at the top, there is a bit of a lab. But the clean room, the main thing that we want to visit here, is located through this laboratory. Let's go. Right at the end here, we go back out into the catwalk. And the final room is revealed. The clean room, the detox facility. If you access the terminal... We'll be able to open the door. Inside is your final boss, a gunner commander alongside a turret. Pick up the bottle cap mine, and if you've got Kate with you, she will uh, proceed to go inside of the clean room, and you can use the terminal to start the detox process, completing her quest, and allowing you to get all this lovely loot here. And that essentially completes Vault 95. And now you know what happens when a load of junkies are put into a vault. Thank you so much for watching. See you all in the next one.